lots of centers of triangles. One thing in a triangle has a center. Um, it actually has several different what we would classify as centers, and they're created by several different things within these triangles. Now, you may have seen some of these before. You may not have. Um, so I'm just going to go over it completely from scratch. The first one we're going to look at is what we call the circumcenter. Okay, the circumcenter. It is created by what we call the perpendicular bisectors. Okay, the one thing that I do like about geometry is typically that the names are very descriptive. So perpendicular bisectors means that uh, these segments are perpendicular to the sides of the triangle and they bisect, meaning we learned that one on uh, Friday, they cut the sides in half. So you will see on um, the diagram here, let's look first of all um, at this segment right here, XM, okay, XM is the perpendicular bisector of the side AB. This point X is halfway along the side AB. It cuts it into two equal pieces, and it's perpendicular to that side as well. MY or YM is another perpendicular bisector. Y cuts the side BC in half, and it's perpendicular to that side and then ZM is the other perpendicular bisector. It cuts a C in half into two equal uh, pieces and is perpendicular. It forms a right angle. So all three of these uh, perpendicular bisectors meet at this point M, which is called the circumcenter. And a neat uh, property of the circumcenter, which is what goes in that blank right there, the circumcenter is equidistant from each vertex of the triangle. Now, we may need to define the word equidistant. Equidistant um, comes from putting two words together, equal and distance. is what equidistant means. Okay, it means that it's the same distance from each vertex of the triangle. So if we look at the diagram here, and it, it looks like that if you think about it, um, when you go from the point M to vertex A, that length is the same as the distance from M to vertex B, and that length is the same as the distance from M to vertex C. Those are all the same distances there. From the circumcenter to each vertex is the same distance. So um, at the bottom of your box there, I would write AM is equal to BM, which is equal to CM. Those all have the same lengths from the vertex to the circumcenter. It's the same length. Okay. Another center that we have is called the in center. Okay. The in center is created by the angle bisectors. So you see that there on your paper, that um, angle A is cut in half right here, and then angle B is cut in half, and angle C is cut in half, and where they meet at that point M is what we call the in center. And then you'll notice from the in-center there are some uh, segments drawn that are perpendicular to each side. 
and those are the same distance. Xm, Ym, and Zm are the same distances there. Um, the in-center is equidistant from each side of the triangle. Okay, the in-center is equidistant from each side of the triangle. So it cuts the angles in half, and then when you go from the in-center and draw a segment to each uh, side, and, and um, distance there, you uh, form a right angle with the side. You don't just draw it wherever you want to. You have to form a right angle with the side. Those segments are equal to each other. So this relationship, we've got xm is equal to ym, which is equal to zm. Okay? So I know this is kind of weird, and it's a whole lot of vocabulary and stuff going on, um, but... I want you to have at least seen them before. Okay? All right, so that's two of them. We've got two more. We've got another one called the centroid. Kind of weird names, too. Okay? The centroid is created by the medians. Okay? The medians are kind of like the perpendicular bisectors. Because you can see each side here is cut in half, but the medians don't form right angles with the sides. Okay, The medians do not form right angles with the sides. Um, what happens is you connect the opposite vertex to the midpoint. So let me tell you, let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, a, B, they figure out the center of A, B is X right there. Okay, that cuts it in half, and then they connect it to the opposite vertex of C. Okay, XC is the median for side AB, and then they do the same thing for side BC. You find the middle by measurement, Y is in the middle, and then you connect it to the opposite vertex at A. And that's the median. AY is the median for side BC. And then same thing for the last side. Z is the middle of AC. And then you connect it to the opposite vertex of B. So where they all intersect is what is called the centroid. And that's called the centroid of your triangle. So. A median, and this is what I just explained to you, a median is created by a vertex connected to the midpoint of the opposite side. <clears throat> now, this one doesn't have any properties about them all being equal to each other or anything like that, but what is true is if we look at, um, let's say, we look at um, this uh, segment from A to Y. Okay, if we look from A to Y, the longer part of the median, AM, is two thirds of the entire median there. Okay, AM is equal to two-thirds of AY. The longer part is equal to two-thirds of the entire median. So that means the shorter part, MY, is equal to one-third of the entire median. Okay, if the longer part's two-thirds, then the other part's one-third. You could also look at it as the um, that AM is equal to 2 times MY. The longer part of the median is twice as long as the shorter part of the median. 
or you can flip that relationship around and say that the shorter part is half of the longer part. Okay. So all those are saying the same thing. I just wanted to give them to you based on, it depends on what information you're given. Okay, if they give you the length of MY and they ask you for the entire median, then you need to look at this relationship right here. So MY is equal to one third of AY. Um, if they give you AM and they ask you what's the length of MY, so that applies to all three of those medians. We could talk about BZ, we could talk about XC as well. Um, they all have the same relationships. Okay? The last one is what we call the orthocenter. Okay, the orthocenter. And that is created by the altitudes. Okay, created by the altitudes of the triangle. An altitude is created by a vertex connected to the opposite side so that it is perpendicular to that side. So it's kind of like the medians, kind of like the medians. The medians connected the vertex to the midpoint of the other side. In this case, we're connecting the vertex so that it's perpendicular to the other side. So I like that these pictures are right beside each other. So you can kind of see the slight differences between the two. Those points, X, Y, and Z, are fairly close to the points uh, for the centroid. Um, but the difference between connecting the midpoint versus connecting it perpendicular moves them just a little bit there, okay? So where they meet, that point M is called the orthocenter. That's called the orthocenter. So I know that's a whole lot of vocabulary and a whole lot of information at one time, um, but you do uh, have this organizer uh, at your disposal. So here's what I need you to do. On the back side of this, you will see there are um, three different triangles with various things listed, labeled, uh, information that is told to you. On number one, it says C is a circumcenter. Number two says X is an incenter. And number three says P is a centroid. Um, so, uh, based on that, they ask you to find different pieces of information. My suggestion to you, um, so you don't have to flip your paper back and forth so much, is I would kind of work with somebody next to you. One of you keep your paper so that you can see this side of it with all the information on it. And uh, one of you have the worksheet uh, to kind of work through and be able to find uh, those missing pieces.